I think I have officially found my favourite 5x5 piston door. This 5x5 piston door, simply because of the way it opens. It's a sliding 5x5 piston door. It opens horizontally and I absolutely love it if we push this button. Oh, look at that. That is incredibly satisfying right there. And if we push the button again, the door will obviously close. And again, equally as satisfying on the closing and opening sequence. There's just something about a piston door opening sideways rather than going up or down that just makes it that much more satisfying. And the way this thing works is actually relatively simple. These are all separate flying machines. So this here is a separate flying machine and this here is another separate flying machine. And then we have these little activation systems that basically allow the door to open and close. So all of these pistons here will fire and then they will update all of these observers, which then updates all of these flying machines, allowing the door to open. We can also open and close the door from the other side. And again, it's just incredibly satisfying, though it's not as satisfying watching it from the honey and slime side as it is from watching it from the actual door side. And yes, there is something that does slightly bother me, which is the door is inset here by one block and the reason for that is because when you update this door this front section here will fire before the rest of this so the door will stick out by one block if you have the door sat here so basically what i'm trying to say is the door will stick out here for a moment when you're closing the door just one block like this and it just looks really really weird so i decided to pull the door back one more block so it looks a lot more satisfying on the closing sequence so you can see the door is pushed forward slightly and then the rest of the door follows shortly after and it just looks a lot more satisfying with it all closing together rather than it sticking out by one block and then the rest closing afterwards i just think it looks a lot cooler but the opening sequence is definitely more satisfying than the closing sequence because it is more immediate most of you who are watching this video right now aren't subscribed to my channel more or less like 90 percent of you or something like that so if you could please do me the favor of hitting that subscribe button because it really does help me out and I really would appreciate it. Also, I feel like I should mention that this piston door design was inspired by Mumbo's latest vault door video. And I tried to work out how to create a piston door like this by myself with no help whatsoever. I couldn't do it. It made my brain hurt. And then I had a look at Mumbo's vault door video because he did that giant piston door that opened sideways. And I took inspiration from that. Also, just a quick side note, this does not work in Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. You're most welcome to try, but it's not going to work because Bedrock and Java Redstone do not mingle well together. And inside this shulker box is everything you're going to need to build your piston door. 75 honey blocks, 75 slime blocks, 16 observers, 16 sticky pistons, 30 immovable blocks of your choosing. I personally like to use shulker boxes, but it's not really the most obtainable thing to use. So I recommend obsidian or droppers or furnaces or anything like that, or even some glazed terracotta. A stack of blocks of your choosing, two stacks of redstone dust. You don't actually need two stacks of redstone dust. I just want to make sure that you have plenty to work with. Two pieces of wool, 15 pistons, 13 glass, eight redstone repeaters, and two buttons. I just want to go ahead and grab all of these blocks because we are now going to start building the piston door. And the first thing you're going to want to do is to dig yourself a 20 by 5 area like so. And you also want to make sure that you've chosen the spot for your piston door. I tend to find it easier to firstly place down 5 blocks like so. And then count 15 blocks across and then go 5 blocks across and dig out the rest of the area. So you know exactly where your door is going to end up. And the first thing we're going to be building is the activation system because you really want to get the activation system in first before you even build the piston door. So you want to come over to this corner right here and you want to go one, two, three and place in a piece of wool. And then from this corner here, you want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and place another piece of wool right here. And one block across from this piece of wool, you want to start placing in your regular pistons. So just go ahead and break that one behind there. You can use some temporary building blocks if you want. So you're most probably going to have them on you anyway. And then you want to go one, two, three, four, Five. And now you want to get your glass and build like a nice little snake system all the way up to the top piston like so. Pretty easy to follow. I don't think I really need to explain anything there. And now you just want to go ahead and get your redstone dust and snake the redstone dust all the way up these pistons. Because when we power this block here, all of this redstone dust is going to be activated and it's going to power all the regular pistons at the same time. And there you go. You can see all the pistons are being powered when we power this block. And now you want to place a redstone repeater facing into this block and place down three bits of redstone dust and place a sticky piston right here. Because when this redstone line is activated, this sticky piston will activate and then it will push this observer going into this redstone line right here and a repeater going into this block here. And now you want to grab your pistons again and place a piston here and go ahead and place another five pistons like so. 
and then do the same on the other side. And now you want to do the same again and just snake all of the glass going all the way up the piston. So just place them every other piston and then place a piece of glass here and another piece of glass here. And then go ahead and get your redstone dust again and just snake it all the way up the blocks like so. And you can see we're also using this sticky piston with an observer right here to emit a quicker pulse than this right here because these pistons need to fire before these pistons. So you can see they fire much quicker than these pistons right here. And the reason for that is because we need to update these observers and this section of the flying machine first before we update these pistons here otherwise the entire system isn't going to work. And that's pretty much the activation system done. And the last thing that you actually need to do is place in your immovable blocks along the glass right here because this is what's going to stop your door from one, destroying your activation system and flying off into the distance forever. And the first thing you're going to want to do is to grab your honey or slime blocks and place in two blocks like so. Place an observer right here with a sticky piston in front of it. Then place another two blocks against this sticky piston right here with a sticky piston going into these slime blocks right here. And then place another two slime blocks here and a observer going into this sticky piston. Also a little quick tip, I use a resource pack from Vanilla Tweaks that basically puts directional arrows on observers, hoppers and droppers and things like that. It's honestly a really useful feature because I quite often put things in the wrong direction. So having this directional arrow and not just this really does help indicate which way my observer is facing. And now you want to place another observer from this blah 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 blah. And now you want to go ahead and place another observer right here and a block against it with a sticky piston against this block right here. And now you can go ahead and place in another couple slime blocks like so. And this is the first half of the flying machine done. And the next half is honestly the easiest bit. You just need to place in two blocks right here and just make sure that you alternate between the honey and slime blocks and place in one, two, three, four, five. And that's where your door is going to go and then just place in your door. Also something quite important, make sure that you place your immovable block right here so you can actually stop your door because if you don't put that there this door is just going to go off into the distance again forever so please please make sure that you put your immovable block down and there you go that is the first section of the door done this is actually a really really simple piston door to construct and you just repeat the same pattern over and over again now here's something quite important that i really recommend you do don't build this door all at once build it in layers that's how i do it so first we want to make sure that this little section of this door works and there you go you can see those pistons fired first and now the flying machine is at the proper place and then if we push the button again the door should return and everything should be fully functional and there you go you can see the door has stopped and everything is working a-okay and now you can go ahead and build your next layer of the door and I test it layer by layer for a very specific reason because if you build the entire door and then something goes wrong, you're in a world of pain because these doors, when they break, they're an absolute nightmare to fix. So I really, really do recommend that you make backups, build it layer by layer so you don't have any mistakes and everything works as it should. So now you can just go ahead and place in your other four blocks like so and just go ahead and start repeating the same process but just alternating the honey and slime blocks and you can just go ahead and start placing in the rest of your blocks like so and once you know what you're doing, this piston door is actually very, very easy to build and it takes no time at all. You can see I did this layer relatively quickly and we can just place in the rest of the slime blocks here and place in the rest of the door. And now that we've done this section, we can push the button again just to make sure that the door is working as it should be. There you go. You can see the door is now working and we go ahead and push the button again to make sure the door is returning. And there you go, you can see the door is now returned and everything is working as it should. So I don't think I need to show you the rest of the building process for this door because to be honest, you already know what you need to do. And there you go, you can see my door is now fully constructed and everything is working as it should. That is looking pretty nice. That That is looking very, very nice, isn't it? And now that you've built your entire door, you want to go ahead and build your door frame and add in all of your immovable blocks. And honestly, it's really, really easy to know where to put your immovable blocks. Any blocks that these honey or slime blocks are going to touch, just make sure that you have an immovable block in that location and not a regular block. Otherwise, it will break your piston door. So do be wary of these blocks here as well. So it's going to be these blocks here and these blocks here or, well, any of these blocks here that will be getting stuck onto other blocks. So you can see we have immovable blocks here because of these blocks right here. 
and then we have immovable blocks going along the floor and one here again because of this row of blocks here and we also have immovable blocks going all the way along the top and again you don't have to use obsidian you can use shulker boxes or glazed terracotta or anything like that and the final thing i want to actually show you is how you put this button here and here and i'm not actually going to show you how to construct it i was originally going to but I don't think I really need to. It's incredibly simple. All you need to do is place a redstone line, one block underneath this button here, and then place a redstone repeater right here, just to extend the redstone pulse going all the way along into another redstone repeater. Again, just to make sure that you have a maximum signal strength. And you wanna bring your redstone line along and bring it two blocks behind these pistons right here, and then place an observer going in to this block here. So it powers this block here, so it powers the entire door, and you basically do the same thing on the other side you can see we have a repeater going into this block here and then we've got a redstone line obviously with another repeater in the middle and another repeater one block away from this redstone dust and again a button block one break one block redstone dust i think that is relatively simple i don't think i actually need to show you how to physically do that i just hope people are capable enough to know how to do it i i trust you i think you're capable enough to know how to you know rewire the redstone to basically have the button here and on the other side and there you go that is how you build yourself a 5x5 five five sliding piston door i don't know why i really really struggled with this redstone tutorial i kept jumbling my words up and messing up things i was doing or trying to say and this was like my third attempt of doing it so hopefully you have enjoyed today's redstone video it's been a long time since i've done a redstone tutorial on a piston door well, actually, no, it's not. I, I did one quite recently on a one by one piston door, so that's a lie. I completely take that back. But I've not done one on a big piston door for a long time, like a five by five piston door. And I really, really enjoyed creating this video, and I really enjoyed creating this piston door. And I really hope you do like this piston door. Again, though, I will say it's not the most conventional piston door, it's not the most practical. It requires a lot of resources, and it's also a pretty bulky door. It takes up a lot of space, especially in this direction. I mean, you have to dig a 20 by five area just for this piston door, but you don't have to dig un underground, which is actually quite nice. And again, I love the opening and closing sequence of this door. I really hope you have found today's redstone tutorial helpful, and I hope that everything was easy to follow. Hopefully I can edit it together to something that makes sense because I, I really did jumble up my words quite a lot and had to restart little sections over and over again. Also, before the end of this video, I just want to thank the couple of members that joined my channel recently. So they'll be appearing on the screen right now. And if you're not a member on my channel right now, I would really appreciate if you became one because it really does help support me in creating content. And I would just honestly really appreciate it overall. Again, though, it's optional. You don't have to do it. Please only do it if you can actually afford to. If you can't afford it, then please don't. Okay, just watch my content and support me. That is enough and that alone means the absolute world to me. So if you did enjoy today's redstone video, then please do smash that like button. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing as I really would appreciate that too. Anyway, hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. That was very high pitched, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs>